In this scenario, I am going to talk about the VRF light between the PE and C and also using sub interfaces on the PE rotor. You know that in previous scenario, we learned how we can configure VLANs and also sub interfaces in the aggregation layer. And now in this scenario, I am going to talk about the VRF light configuration on the Ag aggregation layer rotor and also how we can configure sub interfaces in the PEs. Look at here, as you can see in this scenario, we have a provider with three rotors R1, R2, and R3. R1 is the PE rotor, R2 is the PE rotor, and R2, R3 is the another PE rotor. Also, we have one aggregation layer. In aggregation layer, we have one rotor instead of the switch. And uh, for example, this is the R4 and also R5. And we need to connect our customers to this aggregation layer rotor. Uh, for example, R6, R7, and R8 now connected to the R4. And another site of this company, assume this is the comp uh, customer A site 1 and this is the customer A site 2 connected to the, uh, for example, R5. And then R10 connected to R5, R11 connected to R5. This is the aggregation layer in both sites. And finally, we need to configure one routing protocol between the R4 and R1. For example, let me to use the BGP. Here you can use every routing protocol, each routing protocol you want. But I'm going to use BGP in the links between the P and C and also in between the R4 and R1. Also, I use the AS number 65,000 in the service provider and in aggregation layer, maybe aggregation layer has the AS number same as the service provider or maybe it has another AS number. For example, here I'm going to use AS 65,001. In right side, again, I'm using the uh, BGP between the P and C, but if you want, you can configure any routing protocol. This is a good practice for us to uh, for example, reviewing all of the topics we learned until now. And also, this is a little complex because here we have in the rotor 4 and 5, we have VRF light. But in the rotor 1 rotor and rotor 3, we have a real VRF, VRF with M MPLS with the road targeting port and export. Let me to start the configuration with one notepad file. And step by step, we can continue the process. This is the configuration of the previous scenario. I'm using this notepad file, but we need to uh, change some parameters. Starting from the rotor one, this is the uh, rotor one, okay? And as you can see here, we have some interfaces. In the rotor one, we are using the host name R1. The interface name is interface gigabit. At 3 slash 0 and the IP address of this interface is 10.1.2.1.2.5.5.2.5.5.0. In the previous scenario, I used the uh, OSIS, but in here I'm going to the, uh, using the uh, OSPF. Let me to use IP OSPF 1 area, uh, for example, 0 and then IP OSPF network point to point and then no shutdown interface loopback 0 we have one interface loopback 0 on the rotor 1 I, I, I with the ip address of 192.168.254.1.255 it's okay and then we don't need the configuration of the isis let me to use rotor ospf1 rotor ospf1 and then the rotor id should be configured with the uh, for example 192.168.254.1 i will configure another features in the uh, other steps, for example, MPLS or some other features. Again, we have another rotor, rotor R2, host name R2. We have two interface, interface, uh, for example, gigabit 3.0 and also gigabit 4.0, gigabit 4.0. And then the IP address of the gigabit 00 is 10.1.2.2.255.255.255.0. We need to configure IP OSPF1 area 0 on this interface and also IP OSPF network point to point. That's it, and no shutdown. Again, we need to copy this configuration for the rotor, for the interface gigabit 4.0. In inter interface gigabit 4.0, we have the IP address of the 10.2.3.2. 2. 
255.255.255.0. Let me to copy the configuration of OSPF from rotor 1 and pasting on the rotor 2, rotor OSPF 1. The rotor ID is 192.168.254.2. That's it. And then the R3's configuration. In R3, we have host name R3. We have interface gigabit 3.0. Let me to use it, gigabit 3.0. And then the IP address of this interface is 10.233. Look at here, 10, this interface. 10.233 two three then three okay and after that we need to configure ospf on this interface with the ip ospf one area zero for example and then ip ospf network point point here the interface gigabit two zero needs uh, to configure with multiple sub interfaces all uh, sub interface i will uh, configure this interface let me first uh, uh, configuring the inside of the service provider this site okay because of that i'm going to remove this part of configuration and we need only to configuring the ospf instead of the isis in the rotor 3 rotor ospf 1 rotor id 192.168.2543 that's it this is the configuration of our scenario until now we need and we can configure this part of scenario step by step starting from r1 copy and then pasting on the r1 cli this is the r1 cli okay we have one error ip opsf we configured we need to configure ip ospf let me to correct it if you configure step by step you will find the mistakes in configuration okay about the i have read mistyping or about the a, a misunderstanding the config in the configuration or some other things and after that uh, we need to copy these commands also into the gigabit 3.0 we don't have problem again we don't have problem in the gigabit 3.0 of the rotor 3 very good let me to copy again the configuration of the r1 this is r1 and then pasting on the r1 cli now we don't have any error message and then in r2 we can copy the configuration of r2 okay and then uh, for example into the r2 cli that's it very good and the next step the next rotor is rotor 3 the r3 until now we configured the ip addressing and also igp inside of the service provider if you want you can check the neighborship about the ospf it's it's a good practice to con to verifying everything after configuration first show ip ospf neighbor look at here we have neighborship with rotor 2 and then in rotor 2 show ip ospf neighbor again we have rotor neighborship with rotor 1 and rotor 3 and then in rotor 3 show ip ospf neighbor look at here we have neighborship with rotor 2 but we, we need to configure another loopback interface in rotor 5 you know that in rotor uh, in rotor 3 we need to have one loopback interface because finally we will establish bgp neighborship with this loopback interface loopback 0 the ip address of this interface is 192.168.2543 quad 255 let me to enable ospf on this interface ip ospf area 0 also in the rotor one okay we need to enable ospf on the loopback zero ip ospf one area zero okay and then in the previous scenario we use isis and in isis we configured with the for example passive interface loopback zero this is the uh, interface loopback zero of rotor one let me to copy it on the r1 conf t and then copy and paste uh, and after that the rotor 3 in rotor 2 we don't need interface look back okay this is the rotor 3's look back configuration and pasting on the r3 now if everything configured correctly we can check the connectivity between two loopback ip address of the rotor 1 and also rotor 3 let me check the connectivity between these two loopback after some second because we need to wait some second for ospf convergence ping 192.168.2543 with the source of loopback zero as you can see we have connectivity now we can continue the configuration here as you can see we have r4 and r4 connected uh, as a in the aggregation layer to our customers in the previous scenario the r4 is one of the p rotors but here r4 is one of the aggregation rotor okay we need to configure the r4 with new configuration starting from uh, configuration of r4 they, we have 
three interface, interface serial one zero, serial one one, and serial one two. I will configure the gigabit uh, two zero, but for now, let me first configuring the serial one zero, serial one one, and serial one two. You know that in R4, we need to configure, uh, for example, some VRFs. Let me to uh, first configuring inside of service provider. After that, we can talk about the uh, 